Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, my very special guest is Robert Phoenix, Astrology for the Now Age. Robert Phoenix is an astrologer, writer, broadcaster, social commentator. Uh, Robert has been engaged in esoteric arts and healing since the mid-80s. From 1994 through 2000, Robert was a telepsychic and tarot reader, being on the ground floor of the intuitive revolution highlighted by the Uranus-Neptune conjunction for that period. And uh, we'll, we'll have all of Robert's links, including the links to his YouTube channel. So without any further ado, Robert Phoenix, welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thanks a lot, James. Thanks for having me on. What I'd like for you to talk about, Robert, because we're entering into a critical phase of human history. We probably haven't seen anything quite like this since like the fall of, or the lead up to the fall of Atlantis. Could you tell us some key definitions before talking about certain things. Like, for example, you talk a lot about transits and a lot about conjunctions. In, in lay terms, could you tell our listeners, if they're not familiar with the terms, what a transit is and the historical examples of when transits occurred, which created these epical changes here on our planet? <clears throat> yeah, it's a really, really good question. So those are astrological terms. Uh, a transit is when Theoretically, um, a, um, a planet will be in a specific sign, and that planet is obviously based on Western astrology moving, right? So it's kind of, it's moving. Otherly heavenly bodies theoretically are moving, and then they have angular relationships with one another, and out of those angular relationships, we can determine whether the energy will be theoretically positive or negative. Um, easy or challenging, and um, and and as a result of that, um, these transits can have either short, medium, or long-term influences um, on our our lives individually, but also collectively. And I and I work with something called mundane astrology, which is looking at the effects of astrology kind of on the culture, current events, people. There are predictive models that are in there. So from a mundane perspective, we tend to look at the transits of outer planets roughly from Jupiter through Pluto. And the further out you get, the longer the transits get because those planets tend to stay in those signs for a particularly long period of time. Uh, Saturn transits are three years and you get out to Pluto transits, which could be anywhere between 16 to 18 years since Pluto has a really irregular orbit. Uh, Uranus has a seven-year transit, Neptune, 15-year transit. So those transits on the outer planets tend to do a number on the culture and on the planet. So when I talk about transits specifically, like uh, in the way that I approach astrology from the mundane perspective, I'm usually looking at those outer planets and how they're impacting either an individual's chart or um, the chart of, say, uh, an event or the chart of, a, of a, an entity, like a, a country. So that's how transits usually work. Um, and, and the reason that they're called transits is because they are transitory. They're not fixed, they're not static, they move, right? So there's this, theoretically, this kind of heavenly um, choreography that's taking place, and everything is in motion, and everything is in transit. And some of these things take longer than others. And, and when you get into the outer planets, that's where really the profound impact takes place. Now, some of the terminology that I use, you brought up the word conjunction. That's when, um, that's when two planets are within a certain degree or distance with one another. So it's usually when they're in the same sign. Like, for instance, if Mars happens to be in Virgo, which it is today, and let's say um, the moon happens to be in Virgo, that's if they're within a relatively close degree, anywhere between say zero to roughly, let's say 10 degrees, that's a conjunction. And that's when the two aspects come together. That's when the two planets come together. So a conjunction is, is an aspect. So when those two things, when those two planets are within close proximity, the power is amplified. And so then we have to get into what, it, what is the um, outcome of the combination of these, of these two bodies working together. 
So there are five major aspects in astrology. There's the conjunction. By the way, you could have a conjunction when there are two planets that are in different signs as well, as long as they're within a relative degree. So for instance, uh, since, the, since Mars is in late uh, Virgo right now, let's say the moon is in early Libra. So we're talking, what, like say 27 degrees with maybe two degrees Libra because it's within like a five degree orb. That's a conjunction, even if they're in uh, different, different signs. So there's the conjunction, there's the square, which is the 90 degree angle, and squares are generally considered to be um, malefic, although I don't like to use the word, it's kind of loaded, although there are challenges there. Conjunctions can be, conjunctions are interesting because they can be both uh, beneficent and malefic. They're beneficent when the orbs are comfortable. They're malefic when they get too close. And the, the energies between the, these two sort of governing bodies or factors can become overwhelming. So, so we have uh, the conjunction. We have the square, which is at 90 degrees. There's a sextile, and the sextile happens to be at 60 degrees. And a sextile is flowing energy. When planets have a 60 degree relationship with one another, the energy tends to flow. Um, it works together. Sextiles are sort of like the, uh, the kissing cousin of the trine. The difference between the two, besides being separated by 60 degrees, is that the sextile is something that you initiate. You have to act on it. Uh, trines just kind of flow. They're easy. They work. They happen. Uh, that's a 120 degree angle. Then the next angle we would get into would be another 60 degrees, and that would be the opposition. And oppositions can be, can be difficult. And sometimes they can, um, they can be seen as, as malefic uh, tendencies in the chart, depending upon what the planets are. In other cases, like when you get into a sun-moon opposition, that opposition means that you're born on a full moon. And in most cases, being born in a full moon can be quite interesting because it allows the individual to have um, a type of luminescence and shine, like Donald Trump is born on a full moon. So that gives you an example of kind of a full moon character. And then the next kind of interesting angle, although it's not one of the five major aspects, is what's called the inconjunct or the quincunx. And that's at a 150 degree angle. And um, it's not quite an opposition, but in fact, the two, uh, the two planets that would be at that 150 degree angle generally have nothing to do with each other because the signs won't have anything to do with each other. But because they're in this 150 degree angle, they do. And there's a very interesting kind of mystery between those two aspects, well, that aspect and those two planets and those two signs. So for instance, like Libra and Pisces would be uh, an inconjunct at the right orb that they would be within a 150 degree angle with one another. It's kind of like, I was talking about this the other day, like a long time ago, when I started to study astrology, one of the examples of the inconjunct that I came across was um, Snoopy, um, Charlie Brown, and Linus. And that, and that uh, Linus would have fit the definition of a Pisces. And he does, I mean, he's very, very creative, he's very sensitive, he walks around with his blankie and he sucks his thumb and he's very thoughtful and very introspective. And then Charlie Brown is, would be the Libra because he's always trying to kind of make things right and balance out kind of what goes on with the rest of the Peanuts gang. Uh, but he's not, he's not over in balance. Libra is rarely a sign of imbalance. But, be, but they are connected. They're buddies, right? So now we have this version of the in conjunct. It's a very interesting aspect. So those are the five major aspects. Um, the transit is the, the motion in which uh, these orbs, these planetary bodies, um, sort of travel on and have these relationships with. And there's your Astrology 101 primer. Well, thank you for sharing that, Robert. In, in some of your recent discussions, you talk about how certain transits portend issues with the financial world and how that may impact us uh, individually, uh, nationally, and internationally. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, absolutely. So what I want to do is I want to go back to uh, the financial crisis of um, 2008 and 2009. And what made that uh, financial crisis probably more intense, visceral, 
and important than say other crises like the, the, Great, the Great Depression or maybe sort of the uh, inflationary run through the 1970s was when Pluto entered into the sign of Capricorn. And this is a really big deal because it had been in Sagittarius for the previous 15 years. And during the time of Pluto and Sagittarius, um, it, was, it was a time where we were dealing with things like um, religion, uh, fundamentalism, uh, you know, the, the, it was the rise of the mega church during the Pluto and Sagittarius time. We were also watching these mega church leaders getting taken down, like Jim Baker. And, you know, that was Pluto going into these Sagittarian institutions. And uh, Pluto takes no prisoners. It just burns things out and it will display the hypocrisy and show where the weakness and the vulnerability uh, is in certain systems. The other thing that was going on with Pluto and Sagittarius was the increased involvement with entanglements that were connected to um, some of the other Abrahamic religions, specifically Islam. And that really started back at the beginning or the inception of Pluto and, Cap and Pluto and Sagittarius right around 1996, 1997. This is when the United States decided that they were gonna roll up their sleeves and go bomb Kosovo. In that area, of course, there was a, a big Muslim community, a Christian community, and that's when things started to really heat up in terms of uh, stuff like um, the first bombing of the World Trade Center with Ramzi Youssef, which a lot of people um, don't remember, but there was a real bomb uh, that went off in, in, the, in, the, in, I think it was Trade Center 1. And it was a big deal. And that happened during that Pluto and Sagittarian time. And that's, of course, when we begin to connect with, um, what's his name, Osama bin Laden. Uh, it, it, so, so this int Sagittarius represents religion and specifically the Abrahamic faith, orthodoxy. Uh, and that's when we got indoctrinated into sort of the dark portals of Islam. Whether that was true or not, Pluto and Sagittarius was able to um, kind of illustrate that. And what I have found is that in a lot of instances, these movements or the planets, the, uh, the, the movement of these outer planets tend to kind of reflect either social trends or social engineering trends. And it feels like they're actually piggybacking on sort of what's happening from a planetary perspective, which, we, which I'm, we'll talk about as it relates to Greta Thunberg and this global climate thing. I'll talk about that.